Health guidelines suggest that once a person's blood pressure reaches 130 over 90, the person is tending towards hypertension. Hypertension is referred to as a silent killer, sometimes resulting to complications that can affect not just the heart, but also vision, kidney, and the brain. Now, research also reveals that black persons are predisposed to hypertension, with men being at higher risk. What are the predisposing factors and how can it be managed? Stay tuned as we find answers to these questions and more on Nigeria Today. I am Joy Oseawu. With me in the studio to look at this all-important health condition is Dr. Uche Mbachu, a medical doctor and teleclinician. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Mbachu. Thank you for having me. All right. What is hypertension and how do you explain that to the lay person? Okay. Hypertension is basically the blood pressure greater than 130 over 80. Being the 130 being the systolic blood pressure and the 80 being the diastolic blood pressure. Yeah. Hypertension occurs when the blood in the blood vessels is there's a resistance of some sort in the blood vessels to and it, put, it, it gives the heart some it makes it difficult for the heart to pump, pump blood okay so that causes the elevated blood pressure that causes increased pre pressure in the blood vessels mm. now what is the prevalence rate in a country like nigeria in nigeria the prevalence of hypertension is about 30 percent and it's on the increase it's it's gradually increasing because the risk factors are, are persistently amongst us and the the um, most most of the risk factors are not things that can be are not modifiable what are the risk factors okay the risk factors are could be modifiable or non-modifiable the modifiable risk factors are things like obesity exercise a sedentary lifestyle um, smoking alcohol while the non-modifiable um, risk factors are things like um, the black race the black race is um, more predisposed to um, elevated blood pressure as compared to uh, the Caucasians. Is there any reason for that difference between us and the Caucasians? Well, um, a lot of studies have gone into this and basically most of the, um, the people who did the research, most of the researchers came up with mild genetic um, factors, mild genetic uh, uh, things or mild genetic, but it's not, um, it hasn't really been proven that it is the genetics or it's the, the genetic makeup of the black person that predisposes him to hypertension as compared to the Caucasians. Now is there any research going on in that direction because that has conditioned most black people you know I hear that all the time oh because you're black you're predisposed to high blood pressure and I have a feeling that that can affect someone psychologically. Of course it, it would affect people psychologically but um, it's not every black person who has hypertension. For example, there are also some diseases that um, Caucasians are more predisposed to, okay, as compared to black people. So it's just the, it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should get into your psyche that you are predisposed to hypertension. So you should, um, you shouldn't do anything if you can, you shouldn't modify your lifestyle to um, prevent uh, elevated blood pressure. Talking about lifestyle and what we eat, what are some of this um, food we take in that leads to hypertension and lifestyle? I'd like you to elaborate on that. Foods that we take in that leads to um, hypertension. Basically, it's um, junk. If you um, most 
What's your definition of junk? Junk are unhealthy foods like uh, refined foods, most refined foods, uh, fast foods, fast foods, refined sugars, freezy drinks, all those um, unhealthy, what we classify as unhealthy foods. The, the, the mechanism is that they increase the levels of um, cholesterol or lipids in the body, okay, which in turn cause the arteries or the blood vessels to thicken and then it it's, makes it difficult for the blood to be pumped. Okay, so that's basically it. Earlier you referred to the issue of modification where you talked about the modifiable aspect and then and the non-modifiable. Um, a lay person may want to know what you mean by those two terms. Okay, by modifiable I mean you can do something about this, those risk factors. Hmm. While by non-modifiable I mean that these ones there's really not much you can do about it. Um, for example, before the age of 40, men are more predisposed to hypertension than women. Why is that? It's the, there's a lot of research that has gone into it and nothing has nothing substantial has really come out of the research as to why men are more predisposed. But the, the, the interesting thing is after 40 the rates of or the prevalence is almost the same in both sexes and in this case um, some people say that at after 40 some women are more predisposed to gaining weight and you know reducing exercise and, and you know that and, and that leads me to the issue of exercise now a lot of times you hear doctors say to you well you need to ensure that you exercise as much as possible especially when you get to 35 and moving upwards why is it so important for us to do that how is that related to hypertension okay um the it's the exercise is not really age dependent i think that um as as soon as you can or as as soon as you can exercise because it's it's a lifestyle okay it's not something you say okay when i'm 35 i can start exercising so um uh it's important because first of all exercise there's something called uh exercise makes you uh fit that's one and for people who are obese people who are uh, overweight exercise helps in weight loss okay and the weight loss a uh, weight loss of um, 10 kg reduces your blood pressure by about 10 points okay so if you have a blood pressure of about let's say 150 and you weigh 120 kg and you lose about 10 kg automatically it's been proven that you lose about or you reduce your blood pressure by 10 points just by losing weight now that's so some, let me uh, talking about losing weight there's also this issue that some people see it as misconception some some people will tell you that those who are on the bulky side are likely to be more hypertensive and so they need to do more exercise and then you find people who are not too big um feeling free to eat all sorts because they feel that because they are not on that bulky side it's okay to do what they like is that true hasn't it got to do with the heart and some other issues not you not necessarily um, most times there's this misconception that the people who are uh, on the big side are more predisposed to um, all, all the uh, heart conditions or heart diseases but with over time, research has shown that uh, even lean people have high levels of low density um, lipoproteins and triglycerides, and these are the bad fats. Okay, so it's not necessarily a, a question of what you look like on the outside. It's more about what is going on on the inside. And then one other issue, some people feel that because they work in an environment where the have tedious things to do the work from a.m. to p.m. it's okay there's no need to have you go out for exercise will that help in terms of your BP it's also been um, evidence based that stress could lead to hypertension psychological emotional 
stress could lead to hypertension. So uh, for people who think that uh, the stress or work stress is equivalent to exercise, it's not the same. Most time work stress is mental and a sedentary lifestyle on its own is also a risk factor for hypertension. So if you're sitting at your desk from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and you're working, you're, you're more at risk than the person who has uh, 30 minutes of exercise every day. Yeah. Ironically, we, we also know that athletes are prone to hypertension. How do you explain that? Because we know that they're always on the field all the time. So how do you explain the issue of high blood pressure for athletes? Like I said, they are non-modifiable and modifiable. For an athlete who is very active, okay, it could be that genetically he has the uh, family history a strong family history of hypertension which um, uh, it's in this case uh, it's not modifiable the, the what usually happens is that uh, it takes a longer time because the person has um, started a health promotion lifestyle it takes a bit longer for the hypertension to develop and you know most uh, most of these athletes they also take some medications on the side you know and some of these medications too that are taken could cause hypertension for example steroids mm. could cause hypertension so yes so that's a good example of the modifiable aspect you give us what about the non-modifiable give us an example the non-modifiable risk factors are family history mm -hmm. if um, you you have the a father who has hypertension there is an increased chance there's an increased chance of you developing hypertension. Not necessarily saying that you would have hypertension when you get old, okay? But because there is a family history, that's why when you get to the clinic, the doctor asks you, uh, does any of your, anybody in your family have hypertension? Because there's an increased risk of that. So in that case, because it's your family, there's nothing you can do about it. It's non-modifiable. But is it the same thing as the one that one acquires as a result of lifestyle? Now, there are two types of hypertension. I, I forgot to mention that. There's the essential hypertension, which occurs in 90% of cases, and there's secondary hypertension. Now, the essential hypertension is basically um, from risk factors because itself is unknown. Okay, but um, there, there, there are risk factors that have been known to predispose one to having hypertension. The risk factors I mentioned, smoking, alcohol, uh, uh, unhealthy eating, sedentary lifestyle, and obesity, and the rest. Now, um, the secondary type of hypertension is caused by other medical conditions. For example, someone who has... Um, an obstruction in the blood vessel, mm. for example, a stenosis of some sort could lead to hypertension. Someone who has um, uh, endocrine diseases could have hypertension as a complication of that disease. Okay, so um, in this case now, for example, let's use the athlete. The athlete could have a primary ill, Ill health Okay, and then the, com the complication that arose from the ill health is the hypertension. Not necessarily um, a primary or the essential hypertension. In this case now, it's the secondary hypertension. All right, again, we hear people say to us oftentimes, oh, don't think too much. Don't worry too much about any situation. It can lead to high blood pressure. Is that true? Like uh, I said, there is evidence that some stress, some psychological, some emotional stress could lead to hypertension. It's been evidence-based, it's been proven um, by some research. So um, not necessarily, you know, Nigeria, What about economic stress? Stress generally, it could be work stress, it could be emotional, it could be mental. Any form of stress could predispose to hypertension. All right. You're watching Nigeria Today on NTA News 24 and we have been looking at hypertension. We'll take a break now to find out about citizens' education on this topic. Stay with us.
um, there are some symptoms that goes with hypertension. One of them is a uh, you know constant headache. You know, um, constant headache. No matter what you do, you always feel that headache at the back of your head. You know. So I think I was having that. Initially, I thought it was stress. You know. But then looking back, I know that my mom is hypertensive, and they runs in her family. It's killer, from what I know. Um, basically, it's caused by stress, restlessness, lack of sleep, and thinking. So sometimes you might be thinking, you don't even know you're thinking. Before you know it, your pressure will be so high. Like sometimes you might go to the hospital. The first thing they will do is to check your BP. You might not even know that your BP is so high. Then it's caused by high blood pressure. So um, people that have high, high blood pressure eventually become hypertensive and it's a very serious uh, medical condition. You know, it has to do with the heart. Maybe your blood vessels are blocked or things like that. You have high cholesterol level, it also leads to hypertension. So people, when people like when you attain certain age, you're advised to go to the hospital to check your blood pressure, you know, regular, regularly so that you, you avoid, um, you know, a heart attack. The causes of uh, hypertension, stress, maybe you overthinking, not having a settled mind, not having enough rest, sleep can cause it. All those things can cause it. Even sometimes sickness can still trigger somebody's BP. That is a different maybe illness or accident or something like that can trigger BP. Welcome back, and Dr. Uche Mbachu is still with us in the studio. You listen to the comments there from Nigerians. What's your opinion about their views uh, concerning this health issue? Uh, basically, most Nigerians feel that the cause of hypertension is stress. When you think too much, when a lot is going on with you, okay, the stress factor is minute as compared to the, the myriad of other factors that uh, uh, are known to predispose one to um, to hypertension, so the the knowledge base so far is is a, a bit limited because everybody, almost everybody, said it was stress, you know, that causes hypertension, and basically, it's it's not really just stress. There are other factors that work together too. So, as medical doctors, how much of education and advocacy are you people carrying out to make sure that people deviate from just that one dimensional, dimensional approach to the definition of hypertension? A lot is being done individually and collectively. Um, the most times, when patients come to the clinic, a lot, a lot even the ones who have um, hypertension, do not understand the disease. Okay, so a lot of um, patient education is important in the management of hypertension because um, if you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. So um, because some of them do not know that it's a lifelong illness, okay, they take the medications for a short period of time and when they feel better, they discontinue and then subsequently they may come down with um, complications of hypertension. So in other words, when one is diagnosed, with hypertension, you are on drugs for life. Yes. You should make up your mind that you'll be on drugs for life. Okay, there might be modifications in the dose, it might be reduced, you know, but basically you should make up your mind that you're going to be on drugs for life. Now, uh, again, because I have family members who are hypertensive and we hear all sorts of stories from different doctors. Today they're saying to you, don't take palm oil. Don't eat obono, don't eat a goosey soup, don't eat pounded yam. And then you move on to another doctor after a couple of months and they're saying, oh, palm oil is good for you, go back to it. You can eat obono. There's so much confusion going on there. What is the truth in terms of what we should eat? Okay. Especially when someone finds out that he or she is hypertensive. Okay, in the management of, of hypertension, there is something called the DASH diet. The DASH diet is basically dietary approach to stopping hypertension. Okay, these are the foods that we're encouraged to eat, okay, that helps in the management of hypertension. Basically, it includes um, eating whole grains, um, fiber-rich foods, 
foods rich in potassium like bananas foods rich in magnesium and vegetables lots and lots of vegetables and fruits so um the most of the doctors who say don't eat palm oil maybe because um you know there's there are some people who when they are cooking they add lots and lots of oil and the oil on the long run would cause an increase in the bad fats mm. in your body yes which subsequently would cause uh, um, the arteries or the blood vessels to thicken the more and your blood vessel gets elevated so it's a vicious cycle okay so um, they're not necessarily telling you don't eat this it's basically eat in moderation add more fruits and vegetables exercise you know t um, adopt a healthy lifestyle that's basically what we're preaching now so focusing on what we eat i remember a medical doctor telling me uh, that once you get to the age of 30 you should cut off beef from your diet how true is that well, red meat has been, um, research has shown that red meat is, um, it's not very healthy meat, okay? White meat or lean meat is um, better. White meat includes fish and chicken, okay? It's, um, it's, it's a measure, per se, to help, it's all in, in a, in a means to adopt a healthier lifestyle okay it doesn't necessarily mean you should stop eating beef moderation entirely. is the key word moderation is key moderation mm. is key what about family members like you see when you have in a family you have two or three persons that are hypertensive and most times you find out that they are men like you said earlier what should be the attitude of family members towards helping these hypertensive uh, persons in the house support um, because it's a chronic illness it's something that the person may live with for the rest of his life they need all the support that they can get especially from the, the significant others and from people that are really close to them this is because um, if you have a supportive wife for example mm -hmm. who encourages you have you taken your medication today okay come and take your medication you know it's you are more prone to take these medications you're more prone to go for your doctor's appointments you're more prone to to eat healthier you know if for example if it's a man and he has a supportive wife there there'll be more inclusion of fruits and vegetables in his diet mm. so family members of um, people who have hypertension should um, be very supportive you know understand that it's not easy to take medications every day it's really not easy so they should um, offer all form of support that they can or now time is not on our side but i'd like you to answer this question uh, okay. quickly you know um, we hear also from doctors they say even on the internet where you go to um educative website about high blood pressure they say to those who are hypertensive keep aspirin beside you in case of a heart attack if there's a heart attack just pop a pill into your mouth how important is the role of aspirin uh, when you're talking about people who are hypertensive okay um aspirin is really important at, at a certain age at a certain age um it's included in the medications that are given to the um to people who have hypertension now uh, what aspirin does basically is it helps in uh making the blood not thick that's i'm looking for the right way to you know the so explain it to yes, the lay yeah, person yes it makes the blood not thick and it also has pain relief properties so when you're having a heart attack and you're asked to pop an aspirin that is the pain relief property there that it's that it's it's playing the other part is making the blood thin so that it's not too thick and the pressure is elevated to i don't know if i made any sense in all what right. i just said all right uh dr uche mbachu i want to thank you very much for joining us this evening to thank educate you. us on the issue of hypertension and i'm sure uh, those watching 
must have taken away one or two things from what you've said so far. Thank you very much once again. Thank you for and having And that's me. the program for today. We hope you have been able to improve your knowledge on hypertension. And if need be, make the necessary lifestyle changes. Keep a date with us next week for fresh editions of Nigeria Today. I am Joy Oseago. Thank you very much.